Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Rattler with Adam So Fun, and today, who even knows what we're doing? Um, in our last episode, we stitched out the Dream Big Kaleidoscope using a bit oranges pattern. It was specifically digitized for that uh, panel, but you can use it for anything. Remember, if you're shopping for that at abitorange.com, you can use Adam20. It'll save you 10% off that design. Today, we're going to be using a different design. We're going to still be stitching on a Dream Big panel. This is the Dream Big Kaleidoscope. Um, again, it'll take you longer to find it online to order it. If your local quilt shop doesn't have it, um, then it will to stitch it out. Um, but this is a different colorway. But what I did is when I went to buy some fabric for the backing, um, I ended up buying a strip of wide back. And I'm going to load these both right, right after each other. You can still see in the back that the other one is rolled up. I'm using poly puff batting today, so it's nice and puffy. Um, just the one layer, and we're going to stitch out this next one. I'm not going to change the color thread. I thought I was going to, but we're not going to change thread today. So I think it's, um, it is called, it's 2165 Magnifico, and the color is called stainless steel. I did look it up between this video and the last one. Um, but I wanted to show you really quick how I'm going to load these, because like I said, one right after the other on one strip of wide back. So if you do get a wide back, you can get two panels, stitch them both out, sell them for $150 each, and now you've made $150 because with the discounts of the patterns and everything, you're going to spend less than $150. So now you're $150 ahead. See, I am helping you make money. Uh, before we get into this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Um, they drop a little bit sporadically right now because I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. I'm getting dizzy because I didn't eat lunch. So let's do this quick so I can go eat lunch. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, um, you can see that my, my batting is not under my top bar. I'm not going to float this. I'm not a floater. If you're a floater, great. You should do it. Do what works for you. I don't like floating. It's not, it does not work for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load this to my top bar. I am going to be using so tight magnum magnets today. I think I have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 12, but you could do it with 10. It would be fine. Um, these are um, from so tights. Remember, if you're shopping at so tights, AF, ASF 10 will get you 15% off your purchase. I believe it's 15. It might be 20, but I can't remember. Um, but these are sold in sets of five, or you can get them in sets of 10, or you can get, I think, a set of 30. Um, they are a magnet that is strong enough to hold this. It's holding through the batting, through all of the layers of my leader, because that's on there. Um, so it will hold your quilts on. Um, you could load up your whole quilts with these. Uh, they do come with backs that you can stick into your leaders and stuff. I haven't done that because I have the zippers on. I have the red snappers. So I kind of use a mixture of everything when I load. Uh, for smaller quilts, I really like to load with the magnets because I can still load my top. I can load that top super quick. And so that's what we're going to do today. But the first thing I need to do is I need to get this batting out of the way. Because if I try to roll that fabric up with the batting there, it's just going to give me a headache because fabric sticks to batting. So it's going to keep rolling and pulling, and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to move my machine out of the way. I took my batting out from under the bar, under my top bar, and I'm just going to plop it in the back. I just want it out of the way so I can come and load this quilt top. I'm going to bring you close so you can see the loading, the, the magnets, and all that jazz. Pay no attention to what's under the long arm because it's a mess. All right, so now it's time to load up my top. I have my top here. Um, the last time, I, the last one I loaded, I forgot to load a line or do my salvages. I loaded my salvages on the side. So this time I'm going to do it right because I'm assuming my salvages are, are straight. I have my leader. You can see I have my zipper. The reason I'm not using my zippers on this is um, because it's just a quick wide back. I just threw it on, loaded it. It didn't necessarily have to be centered and everything. This was, I, I had something else loaded and I had to take it off. So I'm going to center. I'm just going to toss my quilt. And I'm going to try to center this and line it up with, with what was there before. It doesn't really matter if it's perfect. What really matters is, is it's centered kind of on where that batting rolls or lays. So there we have it. Now I'm folding it back. Now I have my zippers on. How I load this, especially since I have my zippers, if you don't have zippers, it's just the edge of your leader, whatever. I'm gonna line up my salvage edge with the edge of my zipper. There we 
R from one side to the other. Now I'm grabbing my magnets. Oops, my fan's on, it's hot. Um, so I can line that up. Here's my magnet and I'm gonna pop my magnet right on the other side of my zipper teeth. So my magnet is actually sitting here. So I have, a, I have an edge to line up with. So I can fold over and I put them about two inches or so between the magnets. Go. And I'm just going to go across. And I am magnetizing straight to the board or straight to my, um, my pole. So when I get to the end, I have to remember that this is connected. Slide that one down. Come to the other side. I'll try to stay out of the camera for you. And there, my top is loaded. That is that quick. I can roll my top. You can hear it clicking. And I'll make sure that everything is just nice and smooth out straight. And I'm going to roll it to about there. And if you've watched the burrito, you know that I do my accordion fold or my fan fold. pop up into my pole cradle. And now I have the ability to slide this under. And try not to put my, uh, grab it and stretch it and put my hand through it or rip it. I need some lotion for these dry hands. And I'm loaded, my top is loaded. So that's how I'm loading this. Whenever I'm ready, I'm going to run a pump, a plumb line across the top. I like normal, I'll fold my quilt out. I didn't give myself enough room. Um, line up my quilt edge and then stitch down my top. And then that's where you'll see me when we're ready for the next video. So, um, yeah, so I pulled this up. I'm, I'm a good like three inches from there. If you don't have enough backing, because now our batting's here, and again, fabric will stick to your backing, or uh, fabric will stick to your batting. What I'm going to do, ow, I mean, I didn't have enough top. I'm stepping all over, there's stuff all over the floor, so I'm trying to step around it. I lift this up out of, and put it back into my pole cradle before I pull fabric out, or quilt, or whatever, um, because then it takes it away from our batting, and it won't stick anymore. So that's just a little quick tip. Pro tip. There we are. And all this extra I will take care of whenever I roll it up after I base down that top edge. So this is a quick tip on just if you want to load two things, one right after the other, maybe you're doing runners, maybe you're doing mug rugs, maybe you're doing uh, wall hangings, anything like that. Maybe you're just going to load up some napkins and stitch some, uh, st like you could stitch this design really small on some antique napkins. I'm going to do it. I just thought I'm going to do it. I didn't even think about that. I have some waiting for it. But um, whatever. If you want to load something right after the other, this is how I would do it. Load up the first. If you're a floater, even easier. Throw your quilt on, baste it, and then you're done. I'm just not a floater. So for, so for, none, for, for you non-floaters, this is how you would do it. So we will see you in the next video when I actually go stitch this, in, this out with the intermingled design from uh, ProStitcher.com or ProStitcher Patterns. And until next time, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time. Have a good time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook, Instagram, and sometimes I TikTok. I don't know. Not very often. But we'll see you in the next one.